in backwards. Three, two, one. Well, good morning. Greg, uh, Greg Jarbo has joined us here at the Insta VIP podcast. Uh, Greg is CEO and co-founder of SEO PR. Um, he has uh, given me some background on, on his very interesting company. He has uh, started very early in, uh, in the SEO years. He uh, quickly uh, recognized that uh, PR um, it can definitely be uh, used to his advantage relative to uh, search engine optimization. So, Greg, uh, again, thank you for joining us. Um, right. it, when you have a minute, uh, take a few minutes to <laughs> um, talk a little bit uh, about who you are, uh, what you do, and if you could include some notable um, accomplishments over the years, uh, without, you know, making it war and peace, if you know what I mean. Wow. <laughs> Good luck you want with that. The, you want the short <laughs> version. Okay. Here's, here's the, here's the thumbnail sketch. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm the president and co-founder of SEO PR. We were f founded in 2003. Um, and, uh, I'm also the author, uh, of a book, uh, entitled YouTube and video marketing. Um, I'm uh, profiled in another book called Online Marketing Heroes. Um, I teach digital marketing and social media marketing at Rutgers and Coursera and Simply Learn. Uh, I've written over 1,600 blog posts uh, since uh, 2003, spoken at about 80 conferences, and we've won uh, multiple awards over the years. And the most recent one we just won last month uh, was the U.S. Search Award uh, uh, in 2019 for the best use of PR in a search campaign. Oh, very interesting. Wow. Very good. So uh, if you could uh, give me some background on, you know, what uh, your your business, like you, I, as I str struggle through this again, lumpy, lumpy, um, I see that uh, your website outlines 10 uh, major categories of, uh, you know, services that you provide. Um, and, you know, with, within those 10 categories, they're, they're, they're enormously uh, broad categories. So if you could, um, you know, just t tell us a little bit about what you do. Oh, wow. Well, um, I, I, I think the short answer, since we're looking for short answers, <laughs> It is, uh, we like to come up with what I call plan B. Now, uh, there are a whole lot of people out there who are already uh, very busy focused on plan A, whatever it is. And um, they're doing okay. Um, and uh, our mission is to uh, walk in and figure out a way to add value. And uh, sometimes that's uh, by saying, you're not optimizing your press releases and that could help you. And, and so that's certainly how the uh, company started back in 2003. Um, um, a couple of years later, we said, oh, by the way, did you know you can optimize uh, videos for YouTube search? And YouTube uh, has turned into the second largest search engine behind only Google. And, and, and so we added that to the repertoire. And increasingly, we're keeping our eyes um, not focused uh, straight in front. Uh, there are a lot of people who do that. We're, we're trying to look for the opportunities um, sort of that are in everyone's peripheral vision, but nobody's quite focused on. So that's my definition of plan B. Interesting. Okay, well, that is an interesting perspective. So um, without giving away any trade secrets how do you um i guess I, i'm trying to uh uh get a get a clear understanding so i can uh, um explain this in the blog article so how, you, how do you look at uh plan b as as being um working with say uh plan a like can you give, can you give me an example um sure so um 
there are uh, a number of companies that um, have got SEO and, and some, most of them have brought it in-house. Um, and so why would I need an outside SEO agency? Um, uh, a similar thing has happened uh, with social media marketing. I've got a team that's already doing Facebook and Twitter, you know, what, what value could you add? And what we do on the uh, SEO front is to say, okay, um, you're optimizing your website. Who's optimizing your videos? They're on your YouTube channel. Uh, did you know you could optimize those too? And oh, by the way, uh, there are occasions when the YouTube video will turn up in Google universal search results. And, you know, uh, so you're not really optimized uh, if you're only optimizing web pages. So that's one way we, we add value. And the same is true in social media. If you're uh, focused on uh, Facebook and Twitter, that's great. Uh, a lot of people already have got teams working on that. Did you realize that according to uh, the Pew Research uh, Center's latest data, more people in the United States visit YouTube in a given month than visit Facebook? And um, excuse me, if you look at the Alexa data, there are more people going to youtube.com than are going to facebook.com worldwide. So if YouTube was on your to-do list, yeah, I'm going to get around to it someday. Guess what? It's um, uh, particularly as their mobile app has taken off, um, uh, it is actually now a bigger opportunity than Facebook is. So we can help you there. Interesting. Okay. Thank you for that. Um, can you share with us, uh, now you, you did earlier on in your introduction, you did talk about uh, credentials. Um, you know, where, you know, your publishing history, um, you know, your speaking, teaching um, credentials, it's all, all very impressive. So, and you've probably uh, um, jumped into your, your thoughts or segue into your thinking on the future of SEO in, in 2020 and beyond. Um, do you have uh, some some words for us, wisdom? Oh, yes. <laughs> I, uh, after you invited me to be on this, I had to sit down and think. And I said, you know, there's going to be 20 other experts that he's going to interview. What can I come up with that everyone else isn't going to say too? So um, one of the interesting presentations I watched at uh, PubCon uh, uh, Pro Las Vegas in uh, October last month uh, was one by um, Gary Eels of Google. And one of the key slides that he had uh, in his presentation, uh, it was a keynote presentation, was that the um, uh, future at Google is moving sideways. And I thought, whoa, okay. When Google starts telling you they're moving sideways, this, this means it's time to, you know, hone your plan B skills because uh, everyone, you know, is focused on uh, uh, more of the same from Google moving forward. What happens if Google uh, detours in an interesting new way? And shortly after his presentation, we discovered what Sideways was. Um, and Google actually uh, gave it a name. Their big uh, uh, recent um, search algorithm change is called BERT, B-E-R-T. Okay. And there are lots of uh, Google uh, changes uh, rolled out uh, over, over time, but um, most of them go unnamed. So um, uh, when, when, when Google goes through, uh, you know, the internal discipline of saying, we're going to give it a name, uh, it's worth paying attention to. They also announced that it's going to change 10% of the uh, search results. And that's, that's actually a significant percentage. Most of the time when they roll out uh, algorithmic changes, you know, it might impact three, 5%, whatever. 10% is a big number. So uh, it's worth focusing on BERT, figuring out what it does, uh, what it doesn't do. 
Um, because again, 90% of what you're going to do in 2020 is going to be the same. But what is the 10% that's going to change? And that's both a threat and an opportunity. It's a threat if you do nothing. It's an opportunity if you figure it out and take advantage of it. Right. And to my best analysis, and again, I could be wrong. Uh, but um, based on what um, I, you know, I've been able to read and see so far, uh, what BERT does is um, particularly impact what Google is calling longer, more conversational queries. Now, where do longer, more conversational queries happen? I increasingly, they happen on smartphones. Increasingly, they happen on smart uh, personal assistants. And what uh, Google is doing, I think, is responding to a competitive threat from Amazon, particularly Alexa, where they do not want to see a significant share of uh, searches siphoned away from uh, Google uh, and going to uh, you know, uh, uh, Alexa. Uh, and, you know, we'll all look back 20 years from now and say, you remember that search engine called Google? That was a funny thing. <laughs> Good. So, or, or Alexa, Alexa, who was Google? <laughs> yeah, right, right. Good one. Yeah. Um, we use that. Yeah. Um, so I have, you know, I've, I've been, uh, as you know, I've been talking to a lot of people involved in SEO um, and Myself, I've I've been uh, fairly heavily involved in um, parts of our own SEO work and development, and uh, I've been trying to wrap my head around voice search, which is essentially what you've been talking about. And I've 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 learned, but not confirmed that um, that to um, to take advantage of voice search on your website, you essentially have to uh, learn how to properly code uh, schema markup. Is, um, is that your understanding? That that won't hurt. Um, and that's certainly, it's that's part of the 90% that I would keep doing. In other words, don't stop doing it, okay? Yeah. yeah. But, um, uh, let me tell you a few sort of nuggets of information that may help you figure out um, what's going on. So today, you know, and again, it, it's hard to forecast the future. That's difficult, as I think the old cliche goes. Uh, predicting the future is hard. <laughs> yes. Uh, but anyhow, um, uh, so let's just focus on the here and now, because that we can get our arms around. And it turns out that um, currently, if you look at where the answers come from to voice searches, 80% of them, 80% of them come from the top three organic results. So whether you're, um, you know, say, hey, Google or Alexa, whatever, uh, one of the things that they're doing is going out and, t you know, taking a look at um, what's in Google search results today and trying to find the answer um, somewhere in those top listings, which is why, again, 90% of what you are doing, you ought to continue doing. But what about the other 20%? Well. Uh, half of those, interestingly enough, are uh, what I'm going to call local. In other words, uh, I'm just looking for, um, you know, where's a restaurant near me? I'm, I'm, I'm in the car. Um, uh, or, um, it, it, and again, there are variations on local search. Um, and, you know, it's, it's, um, it's a wonderful opportunity if you're a small business because you want to get found in those. If, if I'm, if I'm looking for uh, uh, an Italian restaurant near me, boy, um, you know, I, I, I hope you are well uh, optimized um, uh, for local search, which generally means you, you want to have uh, a, a listing in Google maps as well as on your website uh, listing. Um, 
you know, and, and you have a shot at getting uh, getting found. In the sure. other half of the cases, um, what we are seeing is that when people are using, uh, particularly their uh, uh, from Google's perspective, your smartphone with Android on it, of course. Uh, in other words, uh, they have a horse in that race too. Yes. Um, what what people are doing is when they are doing a voice search, they're using a lot more words than they would have used if they were sitting down at a keyboard in front of their uh, laptop and typing them. In other words, uh, people might use a three word phrase if they are typing something into a search box. That That's about average these days. Right. But they are using uh, an even longer phrase uh, when they're talking. And uh, particularly, they're adding um, other words that they think provide context to, to help, um, you know, whether it's Google or Alexa or whoever, uh, to give them uh, a relevant result. And that's one of the reasons why Google has jumped on uh, that issue. Because again, what Bird is going to do is not only focus on longer, more conversational queries, but they're also looking uh, and putting more weight on uh, prepositions like for and to, which uh, they might have ignored in the past as stop words. Uh, they're not ignoring them anymore because they now provide the context that's necessary to provide a good answer to the query. Now, why is that crucial? Well, uh, today, uh, in about 29.5% of the voice searches conducted on Amazon Alexa, they get an error. They can't process the question. They have to ask you, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't understand. Can you ask that again? Uh, for Google Assistant, that error rate is only 6%. And I think what Google has figured out is the new battleground is, is we've already got the pages pretty well optimized, but we need to pay more attention to what people are saying into their smartphone or personal assistant so that we can take advantage of the words we used to ignore um, um, because very few people did what were called long tail searches um, uh, or relatively fewer. Uh, did it. And now, uh, you know, those long tail searches are, you know, more important. And oh, by the way, they're going to differentiate whether you stop using Alexa because it, it gives you garbage as an answer, or you get frustrated because you've got to ask it four times before it finally figures out what, what it is you're, you're trying to find. Um, and, and, and Google um, uh, is going to focus on giving you uh, the right answer the first time um, because it's interpreting little words that it used to ignore. Very interesting. So we're, and, and they're getting this information to answer the voice question uh, just from their billions and billions of, of uh, pieces of content. Yeah, they've 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 indexed more content than um, <laughs> Amazon or Alexa have, um, uh, so um, they've they've got a uh, uh, a more robust library of answers, uh, and now what they're trying to do is process the query so that they're it, it, using the library metaphor. Their card catalog will get you uh, in, into the right bookshelf faster. So, um, you know. Uh, Interesting. Uh, uh, again, you know, they've so, faced competition in the past, but frankly, not since the YouTube search uh, algorithm was giving them a run for their money oh, 10, 15 years ago. Um, uh, and they're facing it again, but in the voice search uh, era. Okay. So how would you, if, if anything, how would you change the way you're preparing content today to make it more... Uh, uh, more um, voice search capable? Um, again, 90% of what you're doing won't change. 
you still want high quality content. You still need um, uh, inbound links from authoritative sources. You know, uh, if, if you want to use um, uh, structured data, all, all that is good. Um, frankly, um, uh, one of the things that uh, often goes overlooked is page speed has become more important. So yeah, focus on that stuff too, but you should have been focusing on page speed uh, for the last couple of years. That's not new news. Right. So, so the new thing that you have to add on top of that is saying, okay, um, the target search term that I've uh, optimized this page for is a Oh, three word term. Why? Because several years ago, the average search term was three words long. And so that seemed like the, uh, the right length for a, uh, you know, this page is focused on search engine optimization, three word term. And, and now <clears throat> that's, that's not gonna cut it anymore. Right. If somebody is searching for a four five or six word term, and you've only optimized for a three word term, you may not be the most relevant match at the top of the results. But let's say that the three word term you've been able to rank uh, well for, um, and well, you don't, you don't well, wanna change that, that keyword. Do, do you write another article for a longer tail keyword? Oh, sometimes. Sometimes you can solve the problem with new content, yep. Or uh, in other cases, and, and we've done this with some of our clients, we go back in and say, okay, if we, um, I don't know if you're familiar with the concept of Russian nesting dolls. No. Well, um, uh, in Russia, they have a little doll inside of a medium sized doll who's inside of a bigger doll. And, you know, you twist them and open them and oh my gosh, there's a smaller doll inside of it, right? Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, it's anyhow. It's a Russian nesting doll. Uh, do a Google search, you'll see one. Um, and so we take the same concept uh, when we quote, re-optimize a page for longer terms. We'll keep the three word term. And then we will look for uh, either some words to add in front of it or at the end of it to turn it into a four, five or six word term. So you may still optimize for search engine optimization, but it's now search engine optimization agency in Boston. Right. Okay, I get it, I get it, that makes sense. Okay, well, let's, um, let's move on to uh, discussing uh, what um, three SEO tools you use and, 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 and if that's not appropriate, uh, oh, no, no perhaps... it is, it is. In fact, it'll tie into what we just talked about. Okay, go ahead. So the first tool I use is Google trends. Still works. A lot of people already use it. Yeah, 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 yeah. But here's how I use it differently. Um, I will type in the three word term, like the one we just talked about, whatever that three word term is. And then what I do is I scroll all the way to the bottom of Google Trends where they talk about, uh, you know, people who are searching for this three word term, um, you know, here, here are the top or the uh, uh, rising uh, search terms that are variations on that. And that's then where I can find my four, five and six word term that is a variation on the three word term. And it is, um, you know, what are the extensions? And in a, most cases, it's again, adding words uh, in front or, or, or behind. In a couple of cases, uh, it's also synonyms. And if it's a synonym, that's fine. Then um, what, what, what I do is um, add uh, um, a, a word like or or and, um, and then throw in the synonym. Um, so again, now my page is relevant for two terms uh, instead of one, but it's a synonym of the first. So it's not like I've, it, it's not like the page is about something different now. So Google Trends is one of the tools. The other tool I use is uh, called People Also Ask, which is a feature of Google Now. And you'll find uh, the, the People Also Ask boxes in the middle of search results. Um, on um, 
a growing, growing percentage of searches. And if you look at those, um, if you've typed in your, again, three word term, and you look at what people also ask, you will quickly see the long tail search terms that are relevant and related to the three word term that you just typed in uh, in your Google search box. Right. And then there's a tool that actually harvests that if you want to use it, that's called Answer the Public. Right. And uh, what they've done is literally scraped all the people also ask variations um, and can give them to you in a snapshot. And again, you know, um, I'll stick with the basics. What's the three word term I'm trying to get found for? And then I will look for, in some cases, they are questions, but not all cases. In some cases, they are just uh, extensions uh, of the core term. And, and now when I go to optimize a piece of content, and sometimes that content is a web page, sometimes that content is a press release, sometimes that content is a video, you know, uh, sure. different, different, different things in different settings. I have a richer um, understanding of uh, not, not only what the core term is, but what the variations look like. Very good. Well, that's uh, very interesting. Um, I want to thank you for that. That's that's going to be a lot of info, info, great info to digest and to format so that it. Uh, I think I think that'll that'll be the snippet we'll be using. Um, so uh, and and the other good news is that your the apps you're using are different from from anyone else that I've talked to so far. So that's kudos to you. Oh, good. Yeah, it's awesome, man. Awesome. Uh, appreciate it. Really appreciate it. I had all day yesterday to try to figure that out. <laughs> <laughs> it worked. Well, Greg, really, I'm serious. Thank you so much for this uh, valuable, insightful inf information. Our plan is to get these uh, 20 in uh, interviews um, transcribed and published uh, before the end of November and to uh, obviously get the press release published before uh, the end of November and uh, get our uh, all the contributors, uh, you know, a nice juicy uh, USA Today backlink. Cool. So thank you, Greg. And